located in Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast today. We know that you will be blessed. To learn more about the House of God, visit us online at www.houseofgod.org. Be blessed.
he's mighty. He looks beyond my thoughts as I go from day to day. He loves me anyway. I wanna say hey. Now, months, 
But I want to talk to you today uh, to encourage your hearts. I'll be speaking to you uh, from a very familiar uh, text that all of you are familiar with. It's from Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. This will be the base scripture uh, text for our discourse today. Romans 8 reads as follows, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, if you're like most folks that are believers in Jesus Christ and have a love for God's word and have a love for uh, the teachings of the scriptures, this verse means a lot to you. You've had experiences in God and this verse has been one of those that you took great comfort in. And I want to talk about it today. I hope that I bring a perspective maybe that you've not thought about or maybe you've not heard uh, explained in the way that I will speak of it today. So I encourage you to follow along with us as we develop this text. Development of this text is going to be uh, from the life of Abraham. Uh, Genesis chapter 11, Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 13, speaking of the life of Abraham. Abraham is revered and, and loved by people of many, many uh, doctrinal beliefs. Uh, the Muslims, certainly look at Abraham uh, as being uh, important in their faith. Uh, Christians look at Abraham as being very important to the Christian Judaic principles of the Bible. The Jews look at Abraham and make great uh, tribute to him as being the father of uh, their religion, uh, their faith, and one of the patriarchs. So Abraham is looked at very favorably by a number of groups. But I want to talk about Abraham today from a perspective maybe that you haven't thought about or haven't considered. And I use it today uh, because uh, from my base scripture today, we're talking about those that are called. and We're talking about purpose. And Abraham certainly uh, fits the category of one that was called that God had great purpose for. As we look at Abraham, uh, sometimes we look at Abraham as a bigger than life figure, uh, as one that uh, God did great works with uh, in the development of the plan of salvation. But what we don't see in Abraham sometimes is Abraham's background. We all come from somewhere. We all have influences in our lives. And Abraham was no exception. If you look at Abraham's background with his father, his family, Abraham probably would be one of the last people that you would associate with uh, the, the, the actual path that Abraham's life took. When you look at Abraham's environment growing up, you look at his family, you look at his father, when you look at the religious life that he very well was exposed to as a young child growing up, uh, the influences, the religious influences in Abraham's life, they were not influences that you would associate uh, with the outcome that Abraham eventually had in his life. I think if you, if you look at the history of his father and the environment, you're going to find out, you'll have to do your own reading and your own research on this, but I think you will find that history of Abraham's background with his family certainly did not uh, lend itself to one that accepted the Almighty God of the Bible. The influences that very well were very much a part of Abraham's life were pagan influences. His father came from a place called Ur of the Chaldees. Well, when you start doing a little bit of research, and you don't have to look very far, to find out where Ur of the Chaldees was, 
uh, what kind of uh, religious influence was very present in Ur and the Chaldees, uh, the Chaldeans, then you'll find out that was a pagan part of the world uh, where they had uh, deities that were not associated with the monotheistic teachings of the Bible. There were pagan influences in Ur of the Chaldees. There were Babylonian influences in Ur of the Chaldees. There were pagan deities in Ur of the Chaldees. And that was the family that Abraham was a part of. His father, Terah, who in, by all accounts, uh, with association in historic backgrounds, was a pagan, was a pagan. And one of the gods uh, that was a part of Ur of the Chaldees was the, the god of the moon, uh, god of the planets that was worshipped. Abraham's early exposures would have been to pagan influences. And when uh, his father left Ur of the Chaldees and left there and went to Haran, you will find out that uh, it was Abraham, it was Abraham's siblings, uh, it was Abraham's family that left Ur of the Chaldees, but then they went to a place called Haran. Well, when you look at that, and you look at the geographical relationship between Ur of the Chaldees and Haran where they went, uh, the influence of the pagan traditions were also in Haran. So, Abraham had no influences by the God of the Bible uh, that he became endeared to over time. It's quite interesting to look at that background. And, and we all come from places that sometimes are influences that go with us for a lifetime. And what makes Abraham's exposure in his life so unique uh, is the background that he was exposed to and what he ultimately became in his relationship with God. As we look at Abraham, we want to look at the, at the, the, the call of Abraham. When we look at Genesis chapter 12, then we find Abraham's call. I find this fascinating beyond belief when you look at the call of Abraham, and you can find this, I'm turning to it now uh, as I, I speak to you, because it's very interesting when you look at the call of Abraham, considering the background and influences that may have been very, very uh, much a part of Abraham's life. I'm speaking, I'm speaking to you today because uh, many of you are having experiences, you have experiences in your life, uh, conditions in your life, uh, things that happen in your life that are completely different than where you started. And Abraham is no exception to this. In Genesis chapter 12, I want to read a few of these verses. This is Abraham's call. Genesis chapter 12. It says, Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out from thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Understand, when you look at this verse, Understand that Abraham's father had brought him from Ur of the Chaldees, along with Lot and along with Nahor and all those people that were part of his family. He had brought them from Ur the Chaldees to Haran. It is there in Haran that 
God speaks to Abraham. I find it just intriguing because of the influences that were part of Abraham's life. But God called him. He called him. And his call is so interesting. He calls him. And then he tells him to leave your country. Move out from your kindred. Move out from your father's house. And go to a place that I'll show you. Can you imagine that experience? Leave your family, meaning your aunts, your uncles, your, your father's kinfolks, your familiar family. I want you to leave them and leave the country that you're associated with. And I'm going to show you, I'll show you where I want you to go, but right now, I just want you to leave. And then God gives him the purpose. He gives him the purpose. The purpose is that I'll make thee a great nation. I'll bless you. I'll make your name great. And you'll be a blessing. And in verse 3, I'll bless them that bless you. I'll curse them that curse you and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed look who he's talking to look who God's talking to God is talking to a man that comes from a background that's a pagan background now did Abraham worship idols I don't know and the Bible doesn't say but he certainly was in an environment where that was the order of the day. But God looks at him and says to him, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless others through you. I'm going to curse them that curse you. That's the purpose. He made a call. Then he gave him the purpose of the call. Now, the other part that I want you to pay attention to is verse 4. This is Abraham's response, or Abram as he's identified in Scripture at this point. This is Abram's response. Pay attention to this. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. No questions asked. No questions asked. He has exposure to a God that he has no experience with. But his response, his response was to depart as God had instructed him. He was 75 years old. In verse 5, Abraham took Sarah, his wife, Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Aaron. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And to the land of Canaan they went. That is just beyond belief. And when we look at this, and I'm, I'm speaking of call, I want to use this, I'm going to hone in on just one word, call, call. Bridging from Romans chapter 8, verse 28, call. Abraham received, or Abram received the call. What was God looking at? What was God thinking when he picked Abraham? When he picked him, what was he thinking? 
Now I want to use this to encourage some of you that are listening today that are experiencing things in your life. Maybe you don't understand. Maybe you're asking the question, what did God see? God calls. And we put the emphasis on call. But I'm placing the emphasis today when God calls any individual, he has a purpose. He has a purpose. We always look at the call. Yes, God has a purpose for the call. He has a purpose in identifying the individual. He does not always identify individuals that you think he should identify or I think he should identify. I look at my own life and I sometimes wonder, why didn't God call me? What was the purpose? There were a lot of other people, a lot of other choices. People smarter, people more knowledgeable, people with more experience. People that have more pedigree than I have. Whole list of things. But when God calls you, He has already established the purpose. This may seem reverse thinking to some of you. But the purpose is already there. What His plan is, is already there. All the elements to support the plan are already there. All the conditions that will be necessary for your development are already there. He has all of that in place before <clears throat> he makes the call. The purpose is already there. If, if, if you look at the text in, Abraham, in, 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 in Genesis 12, he calls Abram, but he did not call Abram without the purpose. The purpose was already there. Abram didn't know the purpose, but God already had the purpose. And he starts to tell Abram what the purpose is. Well, what's your purpose of you calling me? What are you calling me for? I'm going to make you a great nation. Purpose. And I will bless thee, purpose. I will make thy name great, purpose. And thou shalt be a blessing, purpose. I will bless them that bless thee, purpose. I will curse them, curse him that curseth thee, purpose. And in thee all families of the earth be blessed, purpose. God always has a purpose. And then he knows something about you before he makes the call. He knows something about you before he makes the call. The environment does not influence God in making the call because he knows what's in you before he makes the call. Before he makes the call, he's established the purpose. Before he makes the call, he already knows content about you. He knew about Abraham. He knew he came from a pagan environment. He knew that he came from a, a polytheistic environment. He knew that he came from an unholy, unholy environment. He knew about the, the pagan influences around him, uh, what he called him. He knew about his father. He knew about her of the counties. <coughs> he knew about all of those things. But in spite of those things, he made the call. It is amazing. It is amazing. And he already had the purpose in mind. He didn't think up the purpose when he made the call. He had the purpose in mind before he made the call. The blueprint was there. The strategy was there. Everything was there. Everything that was 
needed was there before he made the call. God knew what the response was going to be before he made the call. He knew Abraham's faith before he made the call. He knew Abraham's sincerity before he made the call. Now, Abraham was not perfect. Abraham was not perfect in all of his actions and all of his doings. But God knew something about Abraham that Abraham did not know about himself. You say, well, <clears throat> what? But one of the things God knew about Abraham, verse 5 begins to open that window. Or verse 4, I should say. Verse 4 begins to open the window. You can read it in your Bible. Look at the response in verse 4. So, Abraham departed. Out of all the things he had acquired, out of all of the success that he was having in heaven, out of all of the prosperity that, that he was receiving, out of all the cattle and everything that he was acquiring, out of the the, the, the marriage that he had, the wife that he had, uh, uh, his, his uh, lot with him, all of that. But look what Abraham did. You don't find, the Bible does not give any indication that Abraham questioned God's call. You don't find anywhere here where Abraham question God's purpose. So Abram departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. Not only did he do that, I want you to look at this. He took Lot, his wife, his substance, his assets, and he followed the instruction of God. Verse 5 says it clearly. And Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, all their substance that they had gathered, and the soul. Now look at this part. And the souls that they had gotten in heaven, and they went forth to go to the land of Canaan, Unto the land of Canaan they went. What did God know? What did God know about Abram? That Abram probably didn't know himself. He knew about the bad influences. He knew about all the false religion. He knew about the moon god that was a part of the Ur the Chaldees religion. He knew about all of those things, but what did he know about Abram? What did he see in Abram? He knew that when he spoke to Abram, that Abram would believe him. Why? Because he had called him. God does not call people without knowing something about them. He knew that Abram would be the kind of man that would follow him, sight unseen, history unrecognized. But he knew that Abram was the kind of man that would have faith to believe in what God said. I find it interesting that we sometimes don't know God's purpose. Don't know what God sees in us. I'm talking to people today, looking through this camera today, and people today that God has called. Called a 
according to his purpose. And I want all of you today to understand this. God didn't call you blindly. He called you according to his purpose. What is it that God has called you for today? Sometimes it takes us a while to figure out what did God see in me? What is it God saw in me? He called you. He had established the purpose. Don't get it reversed. The purpose is first. God identifies the purpose. He identified the purpose for Abram. I, I'm going to establish a nation through you. I'm going to establish a, a, a legacy through you. I'm going to bless all humanity through you. I'm going to multiply your seed. This is my purpose. But I need someone that has the commitment to say, when I say go, you go. I need someone that will say yes when they don't understand the details. Yes when all the answers have not been revealed to them. Yes when, when, when all the, the, the steps are not identified. You don't even know where you're going. How many of us have that kind of faith in God today? How many of us will follow God in his directive? And he says to Abraham, I'm, I'm going to send you, I'm directing you to a place uh, that you don't know. I'm, uh, a place that I'm going to choose for you. A land that you haven't seen before. Trust me. Trust me. Abraham's faith to believe God became critical in his journey with God. And I'm going to move here to uh, Genesis chapter 12. I'm going to make a big move on you. At the point of this introduction that Abraham had with God, Abraham was 75 years old. I want you to watch something. 75 years old when when this introduction to God and the promise the call purpose was made Abram was 75 years old what God did not tell Abraham were the experiences that he would have along the way. He had many experiences, but during those experiences, God's eyes were on Abraham. You remember when Abraham, when he went to Egypt, Abraham had a, a beautiful wife, uh, very attractive. And when they went into Egypt, Abraham was concerned. He was concerned. He says, now, listen, this is, uh, uh, Sarah, I, you are a good looking woman. And I'm afraid that if we go down here in Egypt and we're there, uh, that uh, they know that you're my wife. I'm afraid that they might kill me and take you for your beauty. So what I want you to say, the agreement is that, that I'm going to say that we're sisters and brothers. And I'm going to say that to protect myself. God gave him the mission. He had no idea of the kinds of things that he would face. But God protected him and protected his wife. Princess were talking to the Pharaoh, and I tell you, there's a fellow down here by the name of Abel. Well, he got one of the best looking sisters I've ever seen. I want you to meet this sister. Uh, I, I, I think that you need this sister in your in part of your kingdom. God troubled that Pharaoh, troubled his house, and he found out 
that Sarah was Abraham's wife. Abraham never imagined that he would have that kind of experience. One of the few times in the scripture where Abraham uh, was in a battle, uh, when uh, Cali Omer and those in Tyre had the war, had the fight, and there were the kingdoms and the kings were fighting, and they took Lot, and they took the, 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 the Lot from Abraham's uh, relationship. Abraham put together servants, and we don't, we don't, sometimes we don't use this, but Abraham put together servants, and there was a battle, and Abraham was able to uh, uh, conquer the, and win the battle, because they took Lot, and he fought to protect him. He never had any idea that when he said yes to God, that he would encounter that kind of hardship. Along the way, there, there, there was, there was the, the, the case of Sodom and Gomorrah when Abraham and Lot split company because they were feuding between their, 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 their herdsmen. And you find that, that event that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah and, and, and that, Abraham he had no idea that this was in the plan, but God trusted Abraham that he would be faithful and go through all the experiences that were necessary for his development. I'm saying to some of you, God has a purpose in your life, you may go through some things. God has a purpose in your life, you may have some experiences that are unpleasant. God has a purpose in your life, he calls you for that purpose. You've got to understand that, that you're going to go through some things. And from the period that God called Abraham, or Abram, at age 75 years old, until the time that God made the covenant with Abraham was some 24 years. Abram, Abraham, 99 years old when God made the covenant with him. You say, well, what was going on during the interim? God was testing Abraham. Uh, testing his faithfulness, testing his commitment, testing his faith to see what Abraham would do when things got difficult, when things were a challenge. Now moving now from chapter 12 and 13, over to chapter 17. Keep in mind, when we get here, 24 years has passed. Abraham has had a myriad of experiences when we get to chapter 17. But let's take a look at chapter 17. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, Look at what God says. And I am the Almighty God. Walk therefore before me, be thy perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, <coughs> but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me 
and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. I want you to see this. Abraham, Abraham did not get there overnight. 24 years has passed. Tribulations have come into being. Trials have come Abram's way. Tests have come his way. Threats have come his way. Battles have come his way. Suffering has come his way. But when God was satisfied with Abraham's commitment, in chapter 17, he makes the covenant. He makes the agreement. Before he told him what he was going to do, he told him what he would be, but he never signed on the dotted line. Ah, the contract was not consummated. The contract was not signed, but, but in chapter 17, God signs the deal with Abraham. Why does he sign it? Because Abraham has passed the test. He has stood the storm. He has been in the hot battle. He has stood in the midst of opposition. He's gone through it. He's fulfilled his commitment. He's demonstrated to God that I'm ready. I'm willing. Stand. Regardless of what happens. God is saying the same thing to some of you. Don't give up. God called you. He didn't call you for nothing. He didn't call you just to be calling you. He had a purpose before he called you. There was something that God saw in you. And you may not have gotten to the, 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 the pinnacle event yet. You may not have gotten to that place that God really has purpose for you. You say, well, I'm 25, I'm 30, I'm 40, I'm 50. But you haven't gone to the point yet where God has designed the purpose. It could be a one-time event. It could be a series of events. But God has a purpose. And I'm saying, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't get depressed. Don't get down on God. Don't get down on yourself. It could be that one thing God's looking for that he called you for. He had a purpose when he called you. He didn't just call you to dress up and look pretty. He didn't call you just to be uh, uh, an ordinary. He's got something for you that he saw that you can handle, that no one can handle like you. Purpose. God always has a purpose before he calls. Those that he calls, he has a purpose for. Going back to our foundational scripture, I want to read it one more time. I want you to listen to it. Because we always, we spend more time on the call than we do on a purpose. God does not call without purpose. Look at this verse carefully. Verse 28. I want to amplify it just a little bit before we wrap this up. Paul says this. For we know that all things work together for good for them that love God. I want to stop right there at that corner. That all things work together for good for them that love God. Jesus said that we, we, we should love God with all our heart all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our being, all of our fiber. Things work together for good for them that love God. There are components in this. That's one of the things that God saw in Abraham. A love. A love. Love will cause you to stand when you think you can't stand. We'll take things when you think you can't take anymore. We'll stand up 
when you feel like falling down. Oh, I'm preaching. It, yeah, yeah. Love for God will, will cause you to go through things that you wouldn't go through. I, you know, sometimes we say, I don't have to take that. No, you really don't have to, but if you love God, you just might. You really don't have to. I'm, honey, I'm not going to take that. Or, but, but, but God's got a purpose for you. God got a purpose for you. He called you. He trusted you. He saw something in you that you didn't see, that you don't know. Don't let your flesh cause you not to live up to the purpose that God has for you. If someone in my early life would have told me that I would take some of the things that I've experienced without succumbing to my own flesh, I would have said, no, I can't do it. Not only can't do it, I won't do it. You're going to let somebody say that to you and you're going to take it? But the love of God, the fear of God, the reverence of God, the commitment to God, brings us to a place where we're able to withstand things that we thought we couldn't. I, I, I didn't find a lot of uh, dissent from Abraham. When God told him to go, now I want you to get out of this country. I want you to leave all your familiar surroundings. I want you to leave your comfort zone. You can, I'm going to send you to a place. Uh, you'll know it when you get there. I'll tell you when you get there. Well, is it north? Is it south? Where is it? You'll know it. I'll let you know. Meanwhile, move. What God saw, I'm going to reiterate that. What God saw, he just, Abram just did it. Sometimes God just wants us to do it. Don't understand it. Do it. Can't figure it out. Do it! What did he see in Abel? He saw that kind of faith. I don't know where I'm going. You're looking at a nation. It's just me and my family. What are you talking about, nation? I'll make your father of many nations. What are you talking about? I'm going to bless your seed as the, as the stars of the heaven, as the sand of the seashore. I don't see any seed. I am sure. How many stars? Purpose. Purpose. Understand, it's not always about your background. It's not always about your last name. It's not always about your pedigree. It's not always about who, who, whether your father was a preacher or your mother was an evangelist, whether she was an elect. It isn't about that. God takes people. He took Abram from a pagan family. He did not have a monotheistic pedigree background. He came from a pagan background. When God saw something in him, he called him. He had a purpose for him. And I'm saying this over you today. God's got a purpose. Purpose for you. Purpose for your life. Purpose in mind for you. And, and you don't always, you don't always, he doesn't always tell to you. I wish he had told me. He didn't tell me. Would you be a preacher? Preacher. He doesn't always tell you. We must be in the relationship with God for the long haul. For the long haul. Stay with him. Have confidence in him. The Bible says that, that, that Abraham's faith, he believed God, and, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now what does that mean? He wasn't perfect. He was not perfect. I mean, when, when, when they got Lot and, 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 and captured Lot, Abraham drew the sword. He fought. He had passion when he was afraid that, that the Egyptians were going to take his wife. He had passion. He concocted a story. Now, if you go back to his genealogy, you find out that Sarah was really technically his sister. 
They had the same father but a different mother. But the point is, he trusted God, even with his frailties. And I'm saying to you today, all of you today, whatever you're going through, whatever circumstance, you may not understand, but God, if he called you, if he called you, he has a purpose for you. That's why it's important to be sure that you really did get a call. Because you may be doing some things and you think you never got the call. God in that purpose. God establishes a purpose first. The purpose first. And he did it over and over and over and over again. I look at Paul and the guy called Paul. And I look at Paul. Paul had more credentials than Abraham. Paul had more. I mean, Abraham didn't have any credentials. He didn't have the pedigree. He wasn't a Pharisee. He wasn't a study of the law. He, he didn't know the law. God, God says, walk now before me and be that perfect. I'll show you what perfection is. You don't even have a model. You don't have a model. You don't have a mentor. I, I'm going to be your mentor. I'm going to teach you as you go. You'll have some hardships. You have a barren wife. You go through some things. You and your wife get anxious. Can't have a baby. You'll agree. Let's go into the handmaid. Make a baby there. But I make you promises. When I make promises, I keep a promise. You will have a son. You will have a posterity. It comes from your wife. But meanwhile, you gotta have faith. You gotta trust me. You gotta believe what I say. Do things in my own time. Can you imagine my, how, how many of us, by, by 24 years, God makes us a promise. And He doesn't make a covenant agreement with us 24 years later. <laughs> so sometimes God's watching us. How are we going to respond to hardship? How are we going to respond to trouble? How are we going to respond when people don't agree? What are you going to do? Remember the purpose. That's the submission of what I, what, what I, want to talk, what I wanted to say to you today. Called. Many of you are called. But you're not called aimlessly. There's a purpose. There's a purpose. God had you. When will he fulfill all of that? That's on his time clock. If you look at what happened with Samson, Samson made some awful mistakes. But the redeeming thing with Samson was at his death. He was weak. He was weak to the lion. All of that, he cut his hair off, he lost his power. But the thing that you've got to remember is that last stand, that last stand that he had when he brought the columns down. That was a purpose. You say all the things that Samson did and all those things, but he lost focus on the purpose. But it was that last act where he lost his life and he fulfilled the purpose. And I'm saying to you today, there may be one culminating thing that God's going to use you for. You don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. But if it's in God's purpose, his call, be faithful to God. Though the purpose is realized in your life. But we do get impatient, and that's a part of human nature. In closing today, I hope that you will look at Romans 8 and 28 a little bit differently. And I used Abram today as an example of a man that trusted God. I'm going to trust God regardless.
I'm going to trust him until the end. I'm going to die believing God. And, 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 and with what Christ has done um, in the plan of salvation, you're covered. You're covered. You, you, you know, uh, Jesus mastered, conquered that. So you're covered. Apostle Paul, all those new, so-called New Testament preachers, many of them died. Many of them died uh, for what they believed in Jesus Christ. And I think about the great prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah, and those in particular, that have such beloved writings for us, beloved writings for us. We run around the church, lift up our hands, you know, under us a child is born, under us a son is given, the government be on his shoulders, all those things. But you know what? That was the purpose. That was the purpose that God gave to Isaiah to foretell the coming of Christ. But the man died and never saw that come to life. But he fulfilled his purpose. He fulfilled what God had for him to proclaim. He got the message out. It is the message that Jesus used. He got the message out. So what he's saying, you may not in your lifetime see it come to fruition, but you fulfill the purpose. That's what Jesus meant when he prayed in John 17 to the mouth of his disciples for those that will believe on him through their words. That was the purpose. The word got out. We have the word today. The apostles are gone, but we have the word today. Purpose. Calling. Call. When God called you, he has a purpose for you. God bless you today. I'm energized by this. I hope that you are too, because we need to know that our lives are not in vain. Our work is not in vain. Our, our, our commitments are not in vain. Our suffering is not in vain. God has a purpose, has a purpose. Some of us, some of you, are walking testimonies to God's purpose in your life. You say, well, what, 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 what can that be? You have a testimony. You have a testimony. You have a testimony. We have people in, in this church, and I'm deviating just a bit. We have people in this church that have had cancer, diseases that should have killed them. Lung cancer, breast cancer, other kinds of cancer, prostate cancer, malignancies that should have taken you out. But today, you have a testimony. You say, well, what's that got to do with anything? That very well may be part of your purpose. Get the word out. Jesus saves. God, through Christ, is a healer. People have been drug addicted, all kinds of things. God didn't deliver you for you to sit there. You don't need to be in a church to give your testimony. You don't have to be in the choir in the pulpit. Purpose! God called you in a purpose for your life. He delivered you for you to demonstrate the delivering power of God. Amen! Amen! Glory to God for His deliverance today. There is purpose to your life. You don't have to be a preacher. We got enough preachers to save humanity. Enough churches on every corner, every denomination. What we need is people to accept the call and realize the purpose is to promote the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you today. We're so happy. And I'm praying that God will continue to bless all of you uh, that are listening or watching and that God will keep your family safe uh, through these difficult times. We're going to pray. Father, eternal God, we thank you today. Thank you for the call. Most of all, we thank you for the purpose, God. You chose us according to your 
purpose, your initiative, your plan, your blueprint. And we thank you for that today. And we count ourselves to be blessed that you called us to fulfill the purpose that you have for us through Christ. I ask that you will encourage us through your word and keep us, God. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. And now the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. God bless you. Thank you.